What's going on guys, this is Kazi. Welcome back to another epic tutorial. And before we even begin, check out the brand new setup. I am super stoked that finally we have a pretty legit talking head from this angle. Um, this is something that I was trying to incorporate more and more because I feel like when I'm sitting down in front of my computer, uh, one, uh, it's way more natural. Two, I can actually have the camera run while I'm grading. So then you don't just listen to my voice, but you have a little picture up top. Uh, none of these lights are interfering with the actual color grade. I still have bias lighting. I still got the perfect gray walls in the back. Um, the red light is in the background. It's not reflecting at all. So everything is perfect. My grade is going to be kosher. And today what we're going to be doing is we're going to be uh, showing you two different ways. Okay, so I'm going to show you a beginner's way uh, to approach when it comes to working with darker skin tones. And then I'm going to show you the pro way, how I usually approach it. Now, before we jump into the tutorial, I want to take a second and uh, show you my free training. This is something that you do not want to miss. Okay, if you want to take your color grading game to the next level, this training is for you. It is absolutely free, no strings attached. Link is in the description and it comes with tons of freebies by me. Okay, so you get my power grades, my LUTs and tons of practice footage, something that you guys ask for all the time. It is included in this training. So check out the link. And without any further ado, if you guys are enjoying the content, do me a favor, smash the like button, subscribe to the channel for more awesomeness. Make sure you're following me on Instagram and let's roll the intro. All right, so we're jumping right in. We're going to attack the beginner's approach first, and then we're going to lead into the pro way. Um, so I got my quad up, my scopes right here, and this stuff is shot with red. So we're going to give our beginner a benefit of the doubt that he or she knows how to convert the image from lock to rec 709. Okay, so let's go ahead and do that. So I'm going to go ahead, drop on a color space transform. And then here I'm going to select the appropriate settings. So red, white gamut um, for color space. And then we're going to select, oops, we're going to select uh, red log 3G10 uh, for input gamma. And then here we're going to do rec 709 and uh, we're going to do gamma 2.4. Uh, one thing that I want to show you guys here is right now in color management, my color science is set to YRGB, but my timeline color space is set to DaVinci Wide Gamut Intermediate. So basically every node in here is going to perform under the DaVinci Wide Gamut. Okay, so this is how I have everything set up. So what a beginner would do is he or she, she is going to go ahead and create a new node. And then here what they will do uh, after their transform, they're going to go ahead and um, raise their gamma a little bit. Okay, then raise their gain to like really make sure that everything looks good. So something like that before and after. Okay, it looks good. They'll take their lift and they'll pull it down a little bit to keep some contrast, something like that. And, uh, you know, just by looking at it, it doesn't look too bad. So what's wrong with it right now? Well, First thing that's really wrong with it is like how the highlights are blown out. If I were to go here and show you this, all the highlights are clipped out. They're gone. They look nasty. Okay. It looks super digital. It, it exudes like amateur, right? Like it just, it's not a pro grade at all. So that's what we got. Um, so on, on the surface, like I said, it looked pretty good. But when you break it down and look at areas like this, it's like, what is going on? All right. Because beginner will have limited knowledge. They just wouldn't really know what to do. Another thing they will do after that is uh, they're going to create a new node and they're going to create a window. So there's usually a lot of window action going on because um, people get excited about that, right? Like if you've seen a tutorial online and if you're new to color grading and you see somebody using power windows and you see the magic of power windows dodging and burning and all of a sudden you're just like, I want to do that on everything. Yes, there is a time and place for power windows and you can use them. But if we do something like that and and let's just say we soften it a little bit and then he's going to go ahead and uh, he or she and they're going to bring out the baby a little bit. Right. And let's just say they that they even know how to track it so they can do track forward and track backwards with this one button in Resolve 18. Uh, so that's pretty cool. 
Resolve's tracker is unbelievable. So it will latch on and everything is going to be for the majority of our grade pretty good, right? So that's what they will do. Now, the problem with this is that one thing that I've noticed with beginners, they always do that where they overcomplicate their grade, okay? If you know how to properly grade, you don't need to do all this jujitsu to get to what the beginner is trying to do to achieve a desirable effect or look. So what I'm going to do here is I'm going to go here and uh, save this. Now we're going to create a pro version. Okay, so I'm going to go ahead and uh, basically delete these two, leave this one as is. Now, as a pro, instead of building my grade after the CST, I'm going to build my grade before the CST. So I'm going to do everything upstream then downstream. Okay, why is that? Well, then you have to check out the free training to learn more. We can't delve into that right now. Link is in the description. Training is absolutely free. Check it out. The stuff that you're going to learn there is absolutely insane. So what I would do to work with this shot is I will park it somewhere around here. And the first thing that I want to do is I want to go under my custom curves and I'm going to grab my curve around here somewhere and I'm going to keep raising it. Okay. And I'm going to park it somewhere around here. And now what I want to do is I want to create another point right here and I want to start pulling it down. Okay. And I'm going to leave it somewhere around here. Now look at the beauty of what we just did. Remember how the highlights were completely clipped and blown out? Well, look at the highlights now. Everything is protected and it's beautiful. It looks film like, okay, the approach that we used yet. We brought out so much information in the most natural way possible, as if there was an actual light on our subject. Okay, so that's the first thing that we did. So since it was so easy to do this, now we're going to make this look a little challenging for ourselves, meaning we're going to actually take the time. Beginner took this time to cover up his mistakes or her mistakes. We're going to take this time to actually create a look, create magic, because with color grading, it's all about that. You got to shave some time here so you can spend that time being creative. It's that's the balancing act. OK, you want to shave as much time as possible doing the grunt work so you can spend that time creating beautiful looks. So now what we can do is I'm going to go under my printer lights. I'm going to go under here and make sure that my hotkeys are turned on. And now I'm just going to go ahead and add tons of cyan. OK, something like this. So now we got a little bit of like moonlight thing going on, but you'll say, but dude, your skin looks so bad. And yes, I agree with you. So what I will do here is I'm going to create a parallel node. Okay. And with the parallel node, what I can do is I can go under my hue versus hue and I'm going to go select my yellow because that's where the skin tones are. And I'm going to start cranking it to something like this. Okay. And then I'm going to take my reds and I'm going to do the same thing. Not too much. But still, let's bring it up a little bit. And I'm going to keep my skin somewhere around here. It looks really nice. And we still got the nice color separation going on that we created. OK. And now another thing that I'm going to do is I'm going to go here because you see like how much teal we got seeping in here. Like we can tell right here too, right? Like the reds are down here and then the greens and the blues. So I'm going to split the difference here. Okay. So I'm going to raise that up a little bit, like something like this. Okay. And then I'm going to pull this down to something like that and just check this out. Okay. So now if I go before and after how clean it looks and uh, we can, what we can do here is we can just go under our contrast and crank it a little bit, not too much, something like that and leave it somewhere around here. OK, now, do we want to keep creating the separation a little bit more? We can try to do that. So first of all, I can just go under my log and create more of a separation. You know, so I'll pull my reds down and keep my greens and blues up here, uh, right? Something like that, and then pull this down a little bit more and park it right around here. If I do before and after, look at that. 
So we're creating a really nice, like almost like Queen's Gambit palette going on here, right? And, uh, but the beauty of it is like how much we've separated our subject from the background. Like before, this is just like a green mush, right? And we can see the warmth right here. And now all of a sudden we got so many tones going on, right? Like we got cooler tones right here. We got really nice salmon theme going on here. Some yellows coming in or greens coming in through here, right? And now we can even accentuate on that a little bit if we want to, right? Uh, we don't necessarily have to, but we can if we want to. So like if I were to look at this and go, do I want to do anything else with it? Personally, I'm pretty happy with it, right? Because wherever we go, look at the separation. I mean, look at this to that, how much of a separation we have here. Uh, personally, I'm pretty happy with this look, right? Um, let's just look and see if we can do anything else. I'm going to park it on my hero frame and uh, let's just look at it, right? So what else can we do? What happens if I add one green? Um, that's a bit much, right? Um, that's just a little too much. So I'll pull that back. But what if we do half printer light and then we do um this green right here right so if we do that now here i'm going to go back here hue versus hue and then keep working getting my skin back <laughs> sorry guys i'm just concentrating so something like this right and once again I'm looking at the hand right here, down here, and it's just getting a little too blue and too teal. So let's let's control that, right? So we can just pull that up like so, something like that, right? And now if I take these two and just look at the difference, look at how gorgeous that is, okay? So guys, look at it. If I go here, this is your beginner. Look at what's happening with the highlights. Look at what's going on, right? And then even tracking the face, which is like has a halo effect. So let's just say turn it off and now look at the two. And here we didn't only just create a perfect curve to bring out our little guy. We also went ahead and created a really nice look, okay? One thing that I'm seeing is uh, just looking at this, like I can go back in my curve and work it a little bit, okay? So like I can actually, do something like this. And I feel like, I like what it does, right? Because ultimately the thing is that you just wanna see the baby, the rich, like, tones, right? The separation, the color separation that we created right here. That's really what we're focusing on right here. And then this area, you know, getting lost a little bit is not a big deal because the focus is right here. Okay. So, obviously, it ended up taking a little bit longer because we just added an additional task. But you saw how I approached this just this part right here. A little action with your curves, just knowing exactly what you need to do, bring that up. And that really put us in the ballpark where we needed to go. And um, it just did the trick. I mean, we can take this right now and we can even raise it up. Like at this point, if we just wanna add a little bit more, we can keep like cranking it up like this and just look at that. So we, brought up our guy even more and it does add more life to the entire image so i feel like i personally like this even better and now at this point if you kind of want to go back and loosen up the contrast you can right like i mean you can just take this and you can like raise it up if you want to personally i like it where there is a, a little bit of like uh, an intense contrast. Like I personally like that. I feel like it just makes everything pop and separate the colors and the 
luminance values and everything. So for me, it really works. So this is where I would park it. All right, so let's do a quick recap. Let's kill these. And uh, this is our locked Rec 79 um, conversion right here. Then we started with a pretty sweet curve. It's a custom curve we created for this particular shot. And then the time that we saved by just quickly dialing in our image, we went ahead and created a pretty interesting look and then countered that with our hue versus hue and brought our skin back. And uh, if I just take this and do before and after, another thing that we can do is we can click on the split screen and we can actually check out, like look at these two versions right here. I mean, come on. So this is our beginner's version. And then this is our pro version. And just look at the difference. Like, look at these highlights right here, okay? Compared to right here. It just literally feels like we are applying a film print emulation, a completely different color science. It just, it's in a league of its own, right? And it was just created like this in front of you. And um, I, I even took some time to do trial and error, but if I just like was going in hard, it could have been created in half the time. So that's the power of doing things the right way, guys. And uh, let's check out the final look in full screen. So hopefully what you learned from this tutorial is that simplicity is the name of the game because the time that you can save knowing exactly what to do, you can spend that extra time being creative and come up with interesting looks like what we just did. And if you guys have any content suggestions, drop them down below. Do not forget to check out the free training. Trust me, if you thought this tutorial was great, this training will take your color game to the next, next level comes with tons of goodies, power grades, LUTs, and practice footage. Link is in the description. Check it out. And if you're enjoying the content, do me a favor, smash the like button, subscribe to the channel for more awesomeness. I'll see you guys in the next video.